Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com, and this is the first podcast of Show Me Your Dub, and I'm with uh, a wonderful couple, uh, the Barbers. This is Doug Barber, but I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember your, uh, your wife's name. Nancy. Betsy? Nancy. Nancy. Oh, Nancy, I'm sorry. <laughs> digital, digital audio here. <laughs> but uh, they, he sent me uh, information about his Beatle a few months back on Facebook, and he showed me some wonderful video that he shot with this car, with, the, with drone footage, and I was really enthralled by this car. The story behind it, it's actually, it's a 64 Sea Blue Beetle, and unrestored, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? That's right. And I could not believe the condition. I mean, just look at the bug behind him right now. It is in unbelievable condition. Uh, it looks painted. It looks like fresh paint. So uh, here we are, guys. First podcast, show me your dub. And uh, I would like to introduce the Barbers and their 64 Sea Blue Beetle. How are you guys? Real good. How are you, Chris? Uh, doing well. So this day's over from work, and I'm here chatting with you guys, and I was looking forward to this all day. <laughs> we were as well. Uh, thanks for having us on and uh, letting us uh, be on the inaugural uh, Show Us Your Dub podcast. We really very much appreciate it. And this is what uh, we're looking for, cars that have a historical, just a, an amazing history, you know, something that you know, because a lot of bugs have history, but there's special ones out there that have history. And yours was the one that popped up to me first. So, and I, I, I adore Sea Blue. <laughs> I've done a few Sea Blues in the past and uh, I do miss those cars. So, uh -huh. but, um, so tell me a little about yourself and, and, and how you found this Beetle. Sure. Well, as you can tell by looking at us, uh, we're 60s kids. I'm in my yeah. 60s. I grew up in the 60s. Nice. And so, you know, Nancy and I came up at a time when every fifth car on the road when you would go out would be some kind of Volkswagen. Right. Uh, my mother drove me around in a Sea Blue 66 most of my childhood. And so that is kind of burned into my brain. Nice. Uh, my first uh, car was a 67 Type 3 square back and that for a number of years. And then I got a, um, a beautiful green 68 beetle a couple of weeks before i left for college okay three days after i arrived at college a tornado went through the campus and dropped oh. a tree and crushed it to the pan no. i only had that green 68 for about three or four weeks anyway then got a a midnight blue uh, 70 beetle okay. which i had years i had that in all through college and then into early adulthood i had a 74 bus which we repainted fixed up, uh, 75 first year rabbit, the only year they were uh, carbureted. Nice. And, um, so anyway, my, the first, I don't know, 10, 12 years of my driving life, I was, you know, uh, a uh, Volkswagen person. Um, and then, you know, adult life came on and I didn't <laughs> for Volkswagens uh, until 1999. Of course, they released the new Beetle in 98. Uh, you, you couldn't get one. The lines were, you know, the lists were too long. Anyway, I got one in 99 and drove that for a number of years. Nice. And tell him about uh, your experiences. So my first experience with B-dubs was my neighbor who I babysat for all the time, spent a lot of time with them. They had a pale yellow um, convertible bug, mm -hmm. I it was, and they had a Westphalia. Spent a lot of time in both of those cars. Um, kind of got me into the bug thing. And then my first car um, after I got my driver's license was a 72 Super Beetle Blue. Mm -hmm. So also the first time I learned to drive a stick. And it's- So, so VWs are, are through your veins, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the blood is flowing through you, uh, my gosh. You know, if it's 1970 and you go to the uh, shopping center, uh, you're going to see just a sea of uh, well, mostly beetles, yeah. but also maybe some buses and type threes. Nice. So we, we grew up with it. So I'm a recently retired history teacher, mm -hmm. Nancy, the surgical RN. Wow. Uh, not, not quite retired yet. But as I approached retirement, uh, we found your channel a couple of years ago. And, oh, cool. Um, your channel, along with uh, some websites and stuff, kind of rekindled both of our interests in having a vintage uh, Beetle. Excellent. So we thought, boy, that would be a nice retirement interest. 
uh, and it would be something that we could do as a couple. You know, we're in uh, late middle age, but you know, we still have W in our veins. And so we thought that would be fun. We bought the property that we have now, which has a 30 by 40 barn that my first um, post-retirement project was to remodel it. It's divided in two, but the front half is a, a made into a vintage German car garage and then the back half into a wood shop. Mm. Try to keep myself busy during, uh, during retirement. It's a wonderful shop. I mean, just looking at that, it's a dream. I would love that garage. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Thank you. I, I spend a lot of time out here and it, it's enjoyable. Um, we hadn't actually planned to get a, a, a Beetle and get into the VW hobby until maybe 2021, 2022, something like that. But we started learning about, okay, what's available, what costs what, you know, what are the prices, what can you get at different price points and so forth. Right. And some, if about a year and a half ago on Facebook Marketplace, this Beetle popped up. Mm. And it's from our house. We had always assumed that we would have to buy something probably sight unseen from California, Arizona, or something like that, because sure. um, here in the Midwest, it's like New York. These cars rusted away years ago. You just, sure. I mean, if, if it's a Midwestern car, it's going to have rusted away. This one didn't, and I'm going to, when I get into the history of the car, I'll tell you why, <laughs> why that is. So um, where, did, where did you exactly find it? It was, it was near found you? It on yeah, we, it was about 30 minutes from our home here oh in West. My. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Couldn't believe gem. it. What a gem. Uh, yeah, just serendipity. Just we jumped on it immediately when yeah. Doug saw it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It had been listed for eight hours, and I forget how many people he had interested in it. Sure. But I made an appointment. I called right away, made an appointment. We went to see it the next day. Uh, you know, I pulled the plug from number three cylinder to make it what make sure it hadn't been running hot or anything like that. I yeah. did my, the best I could with my rusty 40 year old air school air cooled skills and knowledge. And um, anyway, it checked out nice. and we, we I drove it home the next day. Numbers and, matching. Yeah, it's numbers matching. Oh, what so. a beauty. What a find. So, and you found it when this this year? No, I found it in August of 19. So we've 19. had it okay. not, not quite a year and a half. Uh, Excellent. We, we owned it. Oh and my gosh. It is gorgeous. I mean, if you don't mind like yeah, showing well, the audience here, like what this car is all about. And uh, I know you sent me some pictures and some video yeah, I'm here. Trying to, um, but anyway, this How is nice. Bella. Uh, she was manufactured on May the 21st, 1964. Mm -hmm. And she was imported right to um, Columbus, Ohio from was Germany, and then um, was sold in Dayton, Ohio, uh, in June. Wow. So, you know, this is 1964, so they were selling millions of these things. And um, so this is Bella. We are the third owner. The first person that owned her owned her in, from 64 until 69, but then the second owner owned her just a few months shy of 50 years. So that is part of the explanation of why she's in such great shape. Uh, look at the um, paint. The paint is like, it's luscious. It's still they is... did Okay. Yeah. Bella is original, except that she did have an early eighties respray. Okay. We, we bought it from the grandson of the man who'd owned her for almost 50 years. And so they did an early eighties respray. The only other things that are not original are the um, cylinders, uh, three and four, the cylinder head was replaced. And then we had to replace the um, voltage regulator. I see. The original one finally uh, went bad a couple months after we got it. But other than that, other con than consumables like, you know, tires and stuff like that, it's wow. all original. Um, the guy who had it, he was, I think, 87 when he passed away. And so the maintenance had been let go a little bit, although he took fantastic care of it for, like I say, almost 50 years. And um, let's just get her phone here. Um, so the only thing that we have done to it in the last year and a half is we went after the safety and drivability. It needed tie rods, had a couple leaky wheel cylinders. Like I say, we replaced the... Um, the voltage regulator. We were in a real quandary about it needed new tires. It had uh, bias ply tires on it that were dry rotted. I don't know how old they were, but 
pretty old. Okay. And so we had to go back and forth. Do we want to stay, you know, totally original and do bias ply or do we want to go uh, radials? We decided for drivability to, to get Coker Classic uh, radials. Um, when well, we were stars. kids, you saw th thin white walls in right. the sixties that we remember. And so that's what we went with. Although we like wide white walls that's too. And that's what she originally came with. Yeah. So sure. that's yep. what we put on there. No, it was a good move to get the radials. Cause I mean, I, uh, every now and then I might go for a bias, but the drivability on the radial, uh, and the safety features, I mean, it just, the bias tires, the second they hit a, a crack in the road, you're following that crack. Uh, so I think you picked a good one. I, I love those Coker nostalgia tires. Those are excellent. Sure. And I'll walk around, I'll do the exterior and then we'll look at the interior. Um, let me pop up the, the, the deck lid. There's oh, the engine. Sweet. What a beauty. Yeah. It, it's, you know, other than having the head replaced and then as you can see the voltage regulator, everything on there is pretty much like it. it, it it's the delivery condition, has the original coil, um, original oil bath, air cleaner. So yes. the, the internals of the engine were never uh, messed with? The, the block was never cracked open? No. Wow. Nope. Excellent. Uh, not at all. OK, so we'll continue on around. Um, one of the things we really liked about the car is it had the original interior, and uh, this car had not been exposed to a whole lot of heat. Yes. So. You can oh. see these are your original door cards. Yep. A little bit of fading here, but not too bad. That's okay. And this is one year only. This is, uh, I think it's called Gray Cord. It was okay. only offered in 64. Um, <laughs> and Chris, it's funny. Um, I'm going to talk about the project we did to try to save the original seats, but we got on your channel on, okay, how do you, you know, reupholster, you know, redo your seats. Son of a gun, if you, if the video that you had was exactly this. Yeah. It, it was gray cord out of a 64, and that was your reupholstery video. That's right. <laughs> kind of, kind of awesome. funny. How awesome. But, okay, so here's the original headliner. Ah, yeah. Excellent. Almost 57 years old. Yep, nice sunroof. Yeah, first year steel sunroof. Um, the original mats. Oh, wow. There. Now, the only other thing we replaced is we did replace the carpet. The carpet, okay. okay. Uh -huh. and we replaced the, um, you know, the carpet around the edges like the 64s had, because the other carpet was just going to powder. <laughs> it, was, it, was, yeah. it was not in good shape. Okay. So we did make the decision to do that. Um, Oh, she sits great. The bumpers look phenomenal too. Those are the original bumpers. The, the original bumpers, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. What a beaut. Yeah. Okay, so the second owner had this car, and he retired it from normal use in August of '83, hmm. and it was driven uh, 2,600 miles between 1983 and when we purchased it in 2019. Oh wow. That's um, he left extensive notes on the, uh, in fact, I'll walk over here and show you. The paper trail on this is just unbelievable. I'll just flip through all of these, but these are the notes that he left, the handwritten narrative of the maintenance that he did. It was stored in a garage and then a shed, and then he would take it out usually in the fall of each year and just completely go over it and he would make notes about that. He had a really nice narrative of the maintenance that he did. And then in addition to that, I mean, you can see he took notes on everything, but then there's an extensive, I mean, this goes back to 1968. Wow. The service invoices. The, the prices are interesting to see, you know, yeah. <laughs> $8, $2.97, <laughs> get your valves adjusted for five bucks, that yeah. kind of thing. But, you know, it just goes all through, you know, the original uh, receipts. Wow. Um, so anyway, it was just it, it came with that. Also, it came with two cardboard boxes of parts, which I have back here, including some original 60s. Oh, man, you got a, such a gem there. All this stuff is so valuable to yeah, you can see. this little doll you got. Extra, extra Porsche headlights. 
Mm -hmm. Your viewers will recognize all those books. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, when I was a young guy, and of course, even now, you know, this is the Bible, as everybody knows. Yep. Uh, when I was a young guy back in the 70s, it was white and spiral bound. Yes. Boy, did it get greasy. <laughs> yep. I got and, one of those. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have a, a 70s version of the I have, book? Yep. I have both of them. The one you just showed and the spiral bound. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Terrific. Okay. So. When we got the car and, and dealt with the you know reliability and drivability issues, then the, what was left over was to try to save this you know this one year gray cord interior, mm -hmm. and the issue we were having is of course the threads are fifty six years old, they're dry rotting and it's coming apart at the seams. I'm right. sure you've seen that, seen that many times, and the and it came apart right down here and along here and so forth. Well, anyway, he had tried to glue this and he had yellow glue, dried ah. glue all over this. It was, it was a real mess. Mm. So what we did was we disassembled the seats. We very carefully took off the, the leatherette and then oh, pop open the hood. We we're very fortunate to have the original tool kit. Nice. And as you know, Chris, and some of your viewers probably know, the original tool kits came in the same material as the interior. Yep. And so I found a lady not 10 minutes from our house that was an upholstery restore and had done VW seats before. Nice. So she took the very smallest piece from the from the tool wrap and was able to to fix uh, the seat here. And then wow. she did a stitch for stitch replacement of all the leatherettes. The back seat has not been touched because I don't think anybody's ever sat in it. Right front seats, especially the driver's seat, of course, was literally coming apart the seams. So she broke everything down, completely disassembled the leatherette, and then um, did a stitch for stitch replacement. And then Nancy and I- um, Yeah, we took it off and took it to her. Yeah, yeah, I we did everything. I cleaned it up and then, um, uh, yeah, we removed it all. We watched the videos, how to do right. it. Um, and Doug refinished the frame. And then the woman restitched every seam on the front seats. Phenomenal about. job, phenomenal job, because it's very tough to get a, a replica of that today. I think there's only one source. I don't know if Lenny in West Coast Classic Restoration still uh, offers that, but that is a rare one year pattern. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I tried to find a replacement and couldn't, <clears throat> but yeah, West Coast Classics might, might have the, uh, the 64 gray cord. Um, we went with the foam, <clears throat> the foam replacements, but in the back, it's still the original yes. horse hair. So you still have that um, you ha nice bee dub smell. You have a milder uh, version oh. of, the, of the classic beetle smell. There you, you go. Know? You can't lose that. <laughs> and uh, as you've probably seen, it came oh. with beautiful uh, toolkit. Woo! Yeah, original. Um, we've been really fortunate because. Um, you know, like I say, we're middle-aged and we got into this as a husband and wife hobby. And we're very fortunate to have an excellent um, VW club of long standing, uh, the Central Ohio Vintage Volkswagen Club. They're headquartered oh, in Columbus. They've been around since 1990. And they have been uh, just a joy to you know, newbies like us, and, mm -hmm. you know, to, to vintage Volkswagens. And um, anyway, I want to give them a shout out and uh, they've been very helpful and, you know, accommodating to us. Well, that brings up a great question. So if there is a newbie coming into the VW scene, uh, you know, maybe some, I mean, you guys have a pass of, of Volkswagens, but yeah. say they're getting back into the scene or they're fresh into the scene, what kind of advice do you think you can give them uh, to look yeah. out for before buying a bug? Right. Um, good question. Find people with experience. And of course, if you can find a vintage Volkswagen club anywhere near you, mm -hmm. uh, contact them. Um, you know, my experience has been that they're very welcoming and, um, you know, will give you a lot of good advice. I mean, the, the wealth of knowledge that the members uh, have and are willing to share is, uh, you know, usually pretty good. And uh, that would be a, a good starting point. In addition to how everybody else, how everybody learns everything these days, YouTube videos. There you go. We have, we're, we're at a great time today to, to learn and to, to wrench ourselves just by watching a video. You know, back in the day, it was, 
you know, looking at either the books or getting the next hot VW's magazine or VW trends, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so now, I mean, our, the information is at our fingertips, so just a little bit of homework. Um, you could have a great little hobby on your hands and, and just, and have fun while doing it. Yeah. It's an awful lot of fun. Um, you know, I did it because, you know, I, like I said, I had these dormant 40 year old, you know, Volkswagen skills that have been fun for an older guy like me to, yep. to relearn. You know, I read the mirror manual and it's like, oh yes, I remember <laughs> I was, you know, 17 years old. Yep. Um, but yeah, do your homework. You, you use the magic word. You know, these things aren't cheap. You're talking, you know, a lot yep. of money, even for a, you know, survivor driver like this, obviously this isn't a, you know, a, um, you know, restored concourse like uh, Balone Works does. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of people can get in, you know, this is a, a yeah. good entry point into the hobby. And but, you know, do your homework. And that, uh, no question about it. I, I think you, you, you hit it right on the head. And, uh, you know, you could still find some budget stuff out there. You could still find mm -hmm. some stuff that's, you know, affordable. Um, and, you know, I always tell people, too, they're great items to get into. I mean, their appreciation has been excellent over the past few years. So, uh, but, you know, you can find a gem out there and practice on it and, and have fun. That, that's, that's the name of the game with this whole thing is having fun. So, but, um, right. it, Doug, I, I really appreciate you coming out and showing us that beautiful car. Uh, I'm sure this audience is going to be enamored by that beauty you got there. And um, yeah, guys, I mean, he is on Facebook and I have seen some of his videos. If you go to YouTube, just put in Doug Barber on YouTube and put in his um, 64 Beetle and you'll see a beautiful drone uh, video. If I can show that really quick, if you got two seconds, here it is right here. And there it is. What a beauty. Wonderful. It shuts, uh, for, I got to say the land you got too is gorgeous. <laughs> you got a beautiful home there, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. But you. Uh, yeah, look at that. That's, that's just uh, art. You have art on wheels right there, Doug. And you should be very proud that you, you picked up this gem. And uh, I, I, hope, I hope it stays with you. Oh, oh, it will. We're, we're going to have her for as long as we're around, I'm sure. Very good. And Chris, we want to send out a, a special thank you to you for all you've done for so many years for the Volkswagen community. I uh, appreciate with your, that. With your business, and um, you're very highly regarded, and uh, we very much appreciate you know, all that you do. I really appreciate that, Doug, especially coming from someone like you. I mean, uh, I'm telling you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, listen, have a great night. Uh, wonderful seeing your car. Please keep in touch with us. And, uh, you know, I'll see you around the campus, so they speak. <laughs> okay, Chris, take care. Bye. All right. Be well. Bye. Bye. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Bye. Bye.